Right off the bat, people are just using the wrong parody algs. So the one that's most commonly used is this one. And that's bad because it's really slow and doing D prime L2D, it's just, it doesn't work with the M2s. Now the better one is what I'm about to show you. And that's much faster. Now, while I did just show you an improved parity alg, I really don't recommend that you stay with a method that makes you use a parity alg at the end of your solve. So I'm gonna to explain to you the method that I use to resolve parity, and I think it's a lot better. So the parity method I recommend you use is called the ULUB swap. And for us to understand how it works, we first need to have a better understanding of how the parity alg works. I've set up an example case here with just one edge target and one corner target. As you can see, everything else is solved. So if I was to pretend that this is a normal solve, I'd trace my corners and I see, oh, I have one corner, I know I have parity, then I trace my edges, okay, that's my edge. Now, what I want you to do is pay attention to the UB and the UL pieces. If we look right now, they're solved, which is good because that's where we want them to be. Now, I'm gonna execute my edges. So this is the FR target for M2. And now, since I've done with my edges, I have to do parity. And if we look back at UL and UB, we can see that they've switched positions. So not only did our parity alg fix the M2, it actually swaps both of these pieces. And that's important to know because when we do our final old Pachman target, it will switch them back. So when you're doing M2 and you have parity, what you're basically doing is solving the UL and the UB pieces, switching them with your parity alg, and then switching them back when you do your final old Pachman target. And if you kind of think about it, that's inefficient because there's no reason we dissolve them and then switch them and then switch them again. Instead, we can cut out the intermediate step of solving them and we can just pseudo solve them into their switched positions and then not have to do the parity alg at all. So I went ahead and applied an example scramble to my cube in my orientation and that scramble will be on the screen right now. And I already memorized my corners and figured out that I'm going to have parity for this solve. So now I'm going to go through and trace my edges. I have db and then ur. And after ur, this piece should be ub, but we have parity, so we're gonna treat it like it's ul and send it to ul. After ul, we have lb. And then we have lf. Then we have DL. After DL, we have FR. And after FR, we have what should be UL, but since we have parity, we're going to treat it like it's UB. Now we have a cycle break, so I'm going to cycle break here at RB and then I have UF and then I have RD and then lastly I have BR. So now I'm going to go through and execute all of these M2 targets. So we have DB and then UR like that, and we can see UR and DB are both solved. Now we have UL and LB. And as we can see, UL is pseudo solved now because the UB piece is in it. After that, we have LF, DL, FR, and UB. And if we look, UB is now also pseudo solved because the UL piece is in it. Then we have RB, UF, RD, and lastly, BR. And if we look, our UB and UL pieces are already switched and we didn't have to do a parity alg. So now I can go through and I can solve my corners. I'm just gonna use three style for this. And as we look, the pieces at the end are switched back with that final old Pachman target.
There are a couple benefits of this method, and the main one is that it's always going to leave you with an even number of edge targets. Instead of having a scramble with 11 targets, you'll instead get a scramble with 10 targets or 12 targets. And you may be thinking, well, if I have to do 12 targets instead of 11, that seems like it would be a bit slower, you know? I don't think that's really helping me out much. However, the average M2 target is going to be faster than that parity alg I showed you, so you're actually saving a little bit of time still, even on the scrambles where you're having to do 12 instead of 11 targets. Now, the real benefit of this method comes into play when you're using 3-style, because for 3-style edges you solve two pieces at a time instead of just one, and you can't solve two pieces at a time when you have an odd number of targets. So when you have an always even number, that means you can always solve those number of targets using comms. So let's take a look at this alg. M prime u2 m u2. Let's do it one more time. M prime u2 m u2. So if you look at this case, we have to go to ub and then uf, and we can solve that with once again m prime u2 m u2. And that's cool because we're solving two targets with only four moves. Now, it looks like a really specific case because you're thinking, hey, I don't get ub uf that often, you know, what am I going to use this for? But this type of alg is actually called a commutator, and it's much more versatile than it seems. If we do, say, a u prime, and then that alg, m prime u2, m u2, and then undo that u prime with a u, after you cancel the moves, you end up doing only five moves, and you're solving ur and ul, not just ub and uf. So for this case, we have ul and then ur, and the standard m2 solution for this would be 18 moves. However, we can solve it in only five. Now luckily, there is a generalized structure that makes these comms very easy to think about, and that is, you take the second target, move it to uf, do m prime u2 m, and then do the same move that you started the algorithm with. So if I wanted to do ul ur, ur is my second target, so I move that to uf, m prime u2 m, and then finish the alg with a u, just like I started it with. Now, once again, you may be thinking, well, that's still a really rare case, as cool as the alg is. However, we can use L and R moves to set up to these cases where we're solving two pieces with just five moves, and I'm going to show you some examples of that now. So here we have the case where we have to go to UL and then FR. So FR is just an R away from UR, and now we have both pieces here and can do that five view of commutator. So the case is UL, FR. FR is the second target, so that's the one we're going to put towards the middle with a U move. M prime U2, M. We're going to end with a U, because we started with a U, and then we're going to undo that R setup with an R prime setup. And as you can see, we've solved both of those pieces using only seven moves. Here we have UR, DL. So we can just do an L2, and then we have a five move commutator. So since we have UR, DL, DL is the second piece, which means that that's the one we're going to move to UF. So we start with a U prime, M prime U2 M, and then we end with a U prime because that's the same one we started with, and then we undo our setup of an L2. So one last example here. Here we have to go to BR and then UL. So we can do an R prime setup into this five mover, and since we're doing BR and then UL, UL is the second target, and that's the one that we move to UF with the U prime. M prime U2 M. We started with a U prime, so we're going to end with a U prime, and then we can undo our R prime setup with an R. The DB piece also has its own type of five move commutator, and you can use it for cases where you have DB followed by either UR or UL, or the other way around, UR or UL followed by DB. And I'm going to demonstrate those four cases now. Very similarly to the way that we set up with the R and L moves to the five movers for U, R, and U, L, we can also use R and L setups for this DB five mover. So in this case, I need to go to DB and then BL, so I can just do an L setup, and now I'm at U, L, and then I can do a five mover and do an L prime. 
Here's another case, and here I actually need to go to dr and then db, so I can do an r2 setup, and now I'm at ur, and then I can do that 5-move commutator and undo the r2. There are two more big groups of commutators that are fairly simple in concept and are also very easy to recognize. These two groups are the inner targets on the R and L faces, so these targets and these targets, as well as the outer targets on the R and L faces, so these targets and these targets. I'm going to throw a diagram up on screen and then give you some examples of how to use these commutators. So our first case is UR, BR, and the rule for these types of comms, these are outer R face comms, is that you set the first piece up to UR, do a U prime M two U, then you set the second piece up to UR, do a U prime M two U, and then you undo the setup. So here, my first piece is already at UR, so I can do U prime M two U, and then to set up my second piece, which is BR, I can do an R prime, then I do U prime M2 U again, and then do an R to undo the R prime that I did earlier. Now my next case here is LF, LD, and these are both inner L face targets. So the rule for inner L face targets is you set up to LU, do a U prime M prime U, then you set up the second piece to LU, do a U prime M U, and then adjust the left face accordingly. So. My first target is LF, so I'm going to set that up to LU with an L prime. Do a U prime, M prime, U. Then my next piece is LD, and since we already did an L prime, it's going to be off by an L prime, so we only move, need to move it up one L prime. And then do a U prime, M, U, and then we can fix the left face with an L2. Our next case is RB and then RF, and those are two inner targets on the right face, so the rule for that is you set up to RU, do a U M prime U prime, set up the second target to RU, do a U M U prime, and then adjust the right face accordingly. So since RB is our first target, we're gonna set that up with an R prime, do a U M prime U prime, an R2 to bring the second piece in, U M U prime, and then adjust the right face with an R prime. And so our final case here, is DL, BL, and these are two outer targets on the L face, and so the rule for two outer targets on the L face is you set up to UL, do a U, M2, U prime, bring the second target to UL, do a U, M2, U prime, and then adjust the left face. So our first one is DL, so we bring that up with an L2, do U, M2, U prime, and since we've done an L2, BL will actually be over here at FL, so only have to do an L prime to get it here to UL, U, M2, U prime, and then an L prime. Because M2 is a two cycle method where you only swap two pieces at a time, you have a lot of freedom in how you swap the pieces. So if I have the targets A, B, C, and D, I can group these in a lot of different ways. I can have them all separate, as I do here. I could group A and B together and C and D together. Or I could make A by itself, B and C group together, and D by itself. So the way that I'm grouping these letters together can a lot of times be applied to the way that you group your targets together when implementing some of these advanced M2 tricks. So I have two cubes here, and they're set up to the same case. So what I need to do is shoot to UB, then FL, then UR, and then RB, and then I'm done with this cycle. So I have UB, and then FL, and then UR, and then RB. And as you can see, this is four targets, just like demonstrated with the cards. Now, there are a couple ways we can sort them. The first way would, of course, be all separate, as we have it written. So if I apply it like this, I have UB, FL, UR, and then RB. However, 
If I instead group it like this, where I have UB by itself, and then I put FL and UR together, and then RB by itself, as so, I now have UB and then FL UR, which is a one move setup like this to a five mover, and then RB by itself. So as you can see, by grouping FL and UR together, we, in, we get to do a five mover there, and that's gonna save us a lot of time. At the end of part one, I showed you how to deal with the FU and BD pieces more effectively in cases like this, where I have to go to BR and then FU, using only nine moves. Now, that's a really good method, but the problem with it is that it didn't work when you had two pieces on the M slice. Using the grouping techniques I showed you just a minute ago, it's possible to avoid all of the cases where you have two pieces both on the M slice. However, there are only 24 cases where you're going to get two pieces on the M slice in a row, and so, personally, I recommend that you learn the algorithms for all 24 of those cases. Now, 24 may seem like a lot of algorithms, and to some extent it is, but six of these are only four moves, and many of them are very similar in structure to the others. So if you understand commutators, this will be really easy. If you don't, you can just learn them like algs, but I've typed them out in both commutator and algorithm format. And I've also recorded a video of me finger tricking each alg so you can see how I would perform it.